So I was on Twitter today. You know, I only have it on my desktop. I took it off my phone because it is not a good place to live. And if you spend too much time on Twitter, I just think you're a bad person. Genuinely, if you create arguments with people, if you spend your life on Twitter arguing with people, you need to go to therapy, go meditate, talk to your mom, rekindle your like child self, face your shadow, do something. But I was on Twitter and I came across this Hassan versus H uh, Ethan mostly Ethan versus Hassan. It was because Not So Erudite, shout out to Kyla, a friend of the show, made a tweet to somebody saying, standing up to a wildly abusive community isn't crashing out, kids. It is just reasonable. And I was like, what is she talking about, our dear Kyla? And this person said he's crashing out. And it's a screenshot of Ethan, H3H3. Okay, saying, let me also say I give zero fucks about Frogan's crocodile tears. Frogan is one of Hassan's mods. I believe. She has inserted herself in the middle of my combos many times and cries when I respond to her. She's the official representative of Hassan's community, which I did not know and I don't think that's true, but okay, maybe she is. And the pressure should be on her to behave better and not make his entire community look bad. I also blame Hassan for continually wait, hand waving her horrific behavior to the point that it's essentially an endorsement and fuck Osama bin Laden in this life in the next. And I was like, what the fuck is this? I was like, okay. These are sensitive topics, and I thought we should definitely use this conversation to have a very important conversation about our friends, family, keeping, you know, building bridges with people we love, and how hard it is to keep these relationships alive. Because I had just the other day on stream, I had literally said, every time I hear Hassan and Ethan talk about each other, it's good. I don't think they're having a falling out. And then I see this, and I'm like, oh no, Ethan. Okay, fine. Okay, so then I found this a screenshot from Peter Jackson. I don't know who the fuck that fan account is. So then I saw this screenshot and it said, this is Hassan's mod telling me a Jewish man to shut the fuck up because I dare to say Osama bin Laden was a bad and hated Jews. Please understand that this is why leftovers ended and that her voice is not a, is not fringe within his community. And I'm like, Oh, pourquoi? This motherfucker never shuts up. Oh my God. That's Frogan. Frogan is replying to, Comrade Cassie, Ethan Klein has never heard of historical analysis. And then it says, do Americans actually know why bin Laden did all that? Or do they all believe he hated that they can vote or something? And then, you know, Hassan goes on to say he literally did hate Americans because they could vote and had freedoms. So then I was like, why is this? Okay, hold on. Frogan, okay, I don't know anything about her, they, her, she, her. Okay, I don't know anything about Frogan. I just know, like, she's associated with Hassan. I've never seen anything from her that made me feel a particular way, except maybe that like, oh, maybe she's in a bubble I'm not like a fan of, maybe, I don't know. He, Ethan goes on to say, he did quite literally hate Americans because they could vote and had freedoms. He specifically states that in his writings, the reasons, homosexuality, law of Sharia, drug use, lending, lending of money, letting Jews run the country. Please read his writings before regurgitating, regurgitating tanky talking, wow, look at Ethan saying tanky. <laughs> regurgitating tanky talking points. Um, and running defense for a mass murder, homophobic, anti-Semitic piece of shit. Fuck Bin Laden and anyone trying to rewrite history. Okay. Um, okay. Interesting. We're like in these bubbles. We're all having these relationships. I think Ethan is an idiot. And I think nothing of Frogan because I don't know anything about her. I think it's silly to not understand that Bin Laden didn't create an enemy out of the West just because... But also, it doesn't justify his reasonings, right? So we all agree, Osama bin Laden, bad person, right? I think that, wow, I'm so brave. <laughs> Guys, <laughs> give me an award. Give me an award. I'm a, I'm so brave. Bin Laden, bad person. Crazy. Okay. Ethan cannot engage in political discourse. He He's not well-read. And it just sounds like another, like, superficial reaction but Ethan I actually does I do think he has like a very emotional reaction to these subject matters I mean he obviously is a uh, American Jewish his wife is Israeli Jewish he went back to Israel as a Jew that's how they met right at the museum so they have like ties to Israel in a sense they're not religious Jews but they're it's important to them they're aware that there's only what 10 million Jews on the planet I think that's the number I don't know if that's accurate that's just like the number that I hear about okay it's kind of hard to think oh my god my people are dying my people are at threat 
I understand it's intense. It's intense. I think what's painful, and I was just, this is, the, you don't understand how serendipitous this is that this happened. Because this morning, I was literally, I was contemplating, I was pondering, you know, why is it so difficult to have relationships with people that have these political differences? Now, obviously, people are going to throw around like, it's morally correct, Brittany, that's why. Yeah, what is morally correct? Like, what does that mean, right? In a subjective world? Now, this is so crazy that this happened because I was under the impression that Ethan and uh, Hassan were doing okay. But I also think this is what happens when you have two differing belief systems that both think they're a thousand percent right. And one is a little bit more well-read than the other. But it's like, how do you have that conversation with people? And I was just thinking about it today while I was making my little Assyrian breakfast dish for me and my partner. I was just thinking like, why can't I explain this to somebody that I love so much? Why do we look at each other like, I can't believe you're, you're going to do this. But at the same time, of course, they're going to do this. This is why I think we all live in bubbles. We die in bubbles. Our perception of reality is what we understand about reality. If somebody is afraid to read a book by a homosexual, how could they ever begin to understand homosexuality? If somebody is too afraid or disgusted by seeing a trans person, how could I trust that person to ever engage in the topic, right? I think sometimes progressives sound like they are sympathizing with Osama bin Laden or people that are more associated with those terror acts. And I think in some ways they have a realization in their own bubble of like, oh my God, he didn't just do this out of the blue. Like the West created a problem in the Middle East, which is true. Like I, I don't think America is exempt for the way they've impacted the Middle East. But, and I'm not too citing this. This is the other bubble problem is, um, I don't know how to say this, but y'all just fucked up. Everybody's just so fucked up. And so my whole thing is, is like, we agree all of this is unethical, yes? So y'all just fucked up. And self-defense as an excuse to like do 9-11 or as an excuse to bomb Iraqis or as an excuse, like you're all just fucked up. Now, if you want to sit there and be like, well, who was more justified? Your mother last night in bed with me when she cheated on your father because he's not giving her what she needs. Think about what you're saying out loud. Who was more justified to kill civilians, bin Laden or the American government? Hmm, who was more justified? Do you hear yourselves? Are you listening to the questions you're asking? Do you hear yourselves when you speak? Okay, so at the end of the day, right, I look at this and I look at the situation, I think, how could I even explain to Ethan that Osama bin Laden didn't just attack America for funsies and gay people? It was for more than that, obviously. But also, how do you explain to the Frogans, hey, I don't know what your actual position is, so I'm just going to stereotype you into a progressive. But Osama bin Laden isn't the victim here. Any more than America, like any more than anyone else is really when it comes to these kinds of conflicts. So I don't know who Frogan is, right? I don't know. Under, I don't understand her like belief systems. I've never watched her. I've only seen her in clips for two seconds. I don't know even why she came up. I can't remember what the drama was where she came up before. But this is a real issue in all of our lives, especially with election season around the corner. Look, there are people who are going to change their whole life around based off of who's in government. I have friends that think like America is so bad, right? That it doesn't feel safe to even live there anymore. Okay. I have some people who are like, if another liberal gets elected, we're going to have to move. And I'm like, where? And they're like to another part of America that's more conservative. I'm like, okay. Some people feel like, oh my God, if like, God forbid, have you thought about this girl this morning drinking my coffee? I was like, what if Trump wins? And I was like, wait, because I got it in my head, just like I did in 2016, where I was like, Hillary's going to win. It's fine. And then I was like, wait, wait, okay, let's mentally prepare for a Trump win. Not because I'm voting for him, not because I hope he wins, but because that's just the reality. And look, when, when Kamala wins... Trumpers will mourn. When Trump wins, the rest will mourn. Do you know what I'm saying? It doesn't matter what side of the aisle you're on. You're just experiencing a different relationship with perception. Now, do I think there is a better answer over another? Sure. Because my perception tells me there is. Do I believe in like relativism? Not really. I just don't think we have access outside of the relative. And I think that's the thing I want to encourage you to remember is this, this idea that we have out, like understanding outside the relative. Yes, to some extent, I think we're all smart enough to come to reasonable conclusions. I also think we're all reasonable enough to trick ourselves into unreasonable conclusions. 
So again, when we're having these conversations, when Ethan, Hassan and Frogan are all yelling at each other, they are having their own bubbled perceptions. And honestly, probably all of them are wrong. Somebody in my comment section asked me the other day, like, why do you watch Hassan? I watch Hassan like I watch any other YouTuber because his videos come across my feed. He's covering topics I care about. I want to hear his voice. I want to hear this person's voice. I want to hear this person's voice. I also discredited Hassan initially and initially believed a lot of bullshit about Hassan that other communities were saying about him that I found out like weren't true, definitely. So I popped a bubble on Hassan and I watch him. I mostly prefer his podcast, actually, that he does with Will and everybody. That's actually my preference of how I consume Hassan um, because I like Cutie Cinderella and stuff. Her humor is so right up my alley. Her humor is like right up my alley. But I did dismiss Hassan initially. And now I, I do like the content. So again, like when we're having these conversations, I'm always ready to pop a bubble and enjoy somebody. But of course, if you're just in a bubble where all you hear is Hassan's losing his mind, he's having a breakdown. Hassan's not losing his mind and he's certainly not having a breakdown. Ethan isn't losing his mind. He's not having a breakdown. But any person put in a position where they are very stressed, they feel attacked, the people they love feel like targets, they're going to lose their shit. And that is what happens time and time again on the internet and in bubbles and in relation to all of these very complicated subjects, people lose their shit. And the way we justify our action is with pretty words. I got a comment in my video about Israel and Palestine saying self-defense is in violence. How are you going to self-defend yourself, girl? You're going to use violence? Okay. You can't say it with your chest because you don't want to see yourself as that person. It's hard to see yourself as that person. But at the end of the day, that's why I said to Rashad Crenshaw, shout out to Rashad, that I would mourn my enemy when I kill him. This is a hypothetical and in a philosophy sense. Should I kill somebody in self-defense, I will mourn your death. I will not piss on your grave. I will not dance on your grave. I think it's gross. And acting like we don't do that as Americans, acting like they don't do that as Osama bin Laden and like the, like acting like they haven't done these things is so weird to me. But not really, because this proves my whole theory about bubbles and perception. Of course they did. Whoops. Of course they dance on each other's graves. Of course they piss on graves. Of course they justify doing all these things because we're the good guys, right? God sent us here. He guided us here. He allowed this to happen. I think it takes a lot of effort to be introspective, extrospective. It takes a lot of effort for me to be in the headspace to be compassionate. I have to actively work on it. I know how easy it is for us to let go of our compassion, meaning to suffer with, and to just ignore people and tell people to fuck off. And don't get me wrong, it makes a great YouTube live stream. I am always battling myself, just speaking for myself. I am always battling between my higher actualized self And the version of myself that's like, be a good entertaining YouTuber. Because at the end of the day, like those two place, those two people are doing different things. Higher thinking, actualized Britney, like she's not on the internet. She doesn't need to live here. There's nothing here for her. (laughs) Not really. Like, you know what I mean? But the truth is, is that even me, you know, I love the internet. I do love being a bitch a little bit. Like it's a lot of fun. So the question is, how do you keep yourself? How do you keep yourself away from becoming like truly a bad person? And I think this comes down to values. Because I think that's what's so confusing to people is like, well, when when am I allowed to be sassy? When am I allowed to like tongue in cheek? When am I allowed to hit back? When am I allowed to slap a bitch? You know, it's like my higher actualized self not going to slap a bitch but I'm a two today, bitch. I'm going to slap you. You know what I mean? We are just people on a journey. And so that's always the question. There's a scene in um, One Piece. I talk about this in one of my videos where Luffy chooses not to fight back against Bellamy. And you're like, why? You fight back against everybody else. It's because sometimes in the context of a situation, it's a being a bigger person not to fight back. And in a lot of other cases, bitch, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's like, I'm going to hit you. I'm going to hit you, bitch. I'm going to do it. 
and this is the challenge of life. This is why introspection, extrospection is so hard because life will always send you challenges. They will always give you opportunities to humble yourself. And Ethan almost never takes that opportunity, which is his greatest flaw. He never takes the opportunity, which is why he's a lol cow. Boogie never takes the opportunity to humble himself, lol cow. That ability to seek humility is literally the connecting path to introspection. Now, everyone basic introspects. Babies can introspect, like children introspect. Introspect is to know the self, is to like even say like, I'm thirsty, good introspection, bro. Now there's levels to introspection. And so some people just like cannot fucking introspect to save their life. And then like, there's a whole other thing at play there. Now with Frogan, she confuses me a bit and Chad is confusing me as well. I don't know if this is true that she says, let's see, Frogan literally has said that Israel deserved October 7th and she's a horrible person. Well, first of all, nobody deserves anything in the greatest sense of like what it means to exist on the planet to even assume you deserve anything. You know, I was going to say, I'm reading Drew Afoalo. I think that's how you say her name. Her book, Loud. It's a very specific, oh my God, excuse me. It's a very specific bubble. It's really, it's nice. It's like good. It's good tone. It's good everything. But she's talking about pick me's. And I was thinking about one of my friends. You know, I've got lots of interesting and diverse friends. And I was thinking about one of my friends who is going through this like male validations thing. She's been struggling with it for a while. To the point where she's kind of waiting on this mediocre man to pick her. And I wanted to text her, you don't, you deserve more than a mediocre man. But not really. She doesn't because she keeps picking him. Deserve is sort of an, an insinuation of something. Like you're greater than your choices or you're beyond your karma. You are what you've put into your life. And so even though I want to stop my friend from being such a pick me, she keeps picking a pick me. You know, she keeps picking that mediocre man. And as long as she keeps picking him, that is what she deserves. But also she doesn't deserve anything. None of us deserve anything. But we're all on this sort of journey of understanding what do I want to exist or how do I want to exist? It's not that you deserve a mediocre man. But the fact that you keep picking him says that you aren't ready to do something different. If you keep picking fights with people on the internet, uh, or Ethan, then that means you're not ready to do something else. That's why I say when I see people arguing on Twitter and they really, like, they really argue with literal usernames, I can't wait for you to be somebody else. A healed person isn't fighting with people on Twitter. That's crazy to fight with someone on Twitter. Ma'am. Ma'am. Okay. Um, let's see. Uh, okay. What does this mean? Frogan took the page out of Hassan's playbook. She just has no tact or no class. I don't know what that means. You know, it's interesting. The more I've been watching Hassan, I don't know what you guys think I believe about the world, but I do agree with Hassan mostly politically so far. Like politically, sort of, like mostly. Like... Or maybe morally, I'm not sure. But like Hassan and I have a lot of overlap. I don't, I mean, I guess he's the progressive uh, for real though. Not very many progressives in the space. But I'm not sure what people think about me. Because sometimes people accuse me of being like a centrist. But if Hassan is too progressive, I feel like he's not progressive enough sometimes. <laughs> I feel like Hassan could be a little bit more progressive. But he can't be because he's straight. His straightness is makes it inca he's incapable. He has centrist energy to me sometimes, even though I know he's not, because I'm just like, mm. that's why I watch you know black people, black progressives. I think are my favorite right now in America, in America, because they just they have that extra layer of understanding. Black queer, or black queer adjacent, like they have the extra layer, you know. Hassan, he, I can tell it stops for him. So he feels like not progressive enough, which is like no shade. He's on a journey, but also he doesn't need to be more progressive. You know, <sighs> 
<laughs> What's that saying? We accept the love we think we deserve. Oh, yes, ma'am. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> Girl. Let's see. She has also gone after Ela, calling her a murderer because she had to serve in the IDF. You should do your homework on her before talking about this. You should do your homework on your mom before talking to me. Because she told me all about you. She says you're a bitch. Just kidding. I don't know who you are. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm a bit spicy. See, in real life, I would never do this to you. In real life, I would just ignore you. But see how I'm trapped with you here on the internet? Do you see how I'm trapped with you here on the internet? And so I have to. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You're loved by Jesus Christ. He told me yesterday. Okay. I'm sorry. My bad. My bad. Okay. <clears throat> Let's see. Could this be a case of people tone policing the way Frogan chooses to talk about things? Like she shares the same opinions as Hassan, but isn't she as diplomat? She, but she isn't as diplomatic with her words. I don't know. Let's see. Okay. Let's go to her. Let's go to her Twitter. Who is this Frogan lady? Who is Frogan? Who is she? Oh, see, Fear and Pod. That's the, I like that podcast. Okay. I am not pro Bin Laden. It is insane to take any legitimate political analysis from Ethan Klein. Okay, that's good. Hey, that's good, Frogan. Oh, hold on. Why can't you guys see the whole screen? Because I'm a boomer. Okay. Well, this is good. Okay. I'm not pro Bin Laden. Okay, I believe you. I have no reason not to believe you. Great. But I do I agree with her that taking any legitimate political analysis from Ethan Klein is brain dead. I do agree with that. And, you know, so. Do we, I mean, is this, we all hard agree on this tweet from Frogan, right? Okay. <clears throat> what else has Frogan said? Um... Are you frying chicken, baby? Haha, <laughs> just kidding. How much you pissing goddamn? You make a lot of noise when you pee like that. Okay. Um, a chicken and rice platter hates to see me come in. Okay, same. Realize lately I drive with one leg on the sea. Like, why did I start? Why did this start happening? Because it's comfortable. We're doing a secret tier list on our live recording. Okay. Um, she's getting like no engagement, right? She like she's like me. We get no engagement on Twitter, you know. Okay, here, new, uh, 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 is this her pod? Is that what this is? Yes, it is. Okay. So we've got a pod. <clears throat> okay, so it's like an Arab YouTube channel. Cool. Arab, oh, content creators. Okay. What are we doing? That's pretty good. Back it up just a tiny bit. Okay. A Palestine. Okay, so like she's this lady in the middle. Okay. No, Girl, on. you look good once you back that ass up. I say boom, when you back that ass up. You don't know the Perfect, rest of right you there. Okay. And they have 4,000 subscribers and like 1K views on this video. So like they're very small content creators, okay? Like we're talking about small ass content creator. You know what the dilemma is? Can I say something? Can I say something? Bitch, I'm going to say it anyway. Listen, you know how Frogan is being accused of being Hassan's mod by Ethan? And like Ethan is like, I blame Hassan for continually hand waving her horrific behavior, right? To the point where it's essentially an endorsement. Okay, this is the I hate online content creation. I hate this association thing. I'm gonna unfriend everybody right now off off Discord. I'm gonna unfriend all of you bitches. I'm unfriending all of you. This is the issue I had in the past where people thought people being my mods meant something like I knew them or I ever talked to them or that I like was friends with them or that they represented me. Like, Brittany, that's your mod. They represent you. And I'm like, oh my God. Like, I cannot handle this. Like, I love everyone in my community who's willing to help. But if any of you get it into your head that somehow it means we're close, I will unmod you right now. So is Frogan even close to Hassan? Or is it just like, is it just like the internet being crazy? This is like Amaranth and her mods. Like, they're my friends. I don't... It, no. Um, I don't know what their relationship is. Okay, you guys are saying they're friends. I'm pretty sure Hassan and Frogan are close. But Bryson, I thought we were best friends. Wow. My best friend talked about, about me on the internet. My best friend. Why does everyone think they're my friend? <laughs> 
I mean, I think I'm everyone's friend, but then, you know, are we really like, is that really what's happening? Okay. So there is this like very weird thing about the internet where people think it, it's just like a status symbol. Like, oh my God, I know Britney or I know Hassan or I know, and it's like, okay, relax. But like, what does friend mean? Is Ethan more of a friend to Hassan than Frogan is? Is Hassan supposed to choose between the two of them? And also Hassan is so progressive compared to Ethan. Of course there's going to be issues. Look, this is a huge bubble clash. Like huge, huge, huge bubble clash. And this is what it is. It's a bubble perception. It is a clash of morals. And it's a misunderstanding of the other. Like I've heard Ethan talk about Israel and Palestine before Hassan, before leftovers. And I used to think to myself like, this bitch has no idea what he's talking about. And I barely know what I'm talking about, but I know that he's wrong. Like I know a little bit to know that that's not right. And if you ask me to pick, should I pick Israel or Palestine? I will just kill myself right here. Asking me which person to pick, which one is better at killing civilians? Probably the people with the funds, but also both of you can go kick rocks, but also like, I'm really sorry that like you're really suffering. That sucks. But also, you know, there are other people in the world suffering, but also like your suffering is valid and I feel you and I'm here for it. But also like, it's not just about you. Okay. Okay. I think there's always going to be this issue. My suffering is more important than your suffering and you should support me. And cause my suffering is like, I don't know, bro. At this point, all feels like a bunch of men killing a bunch of people in the name of power. And y'all keep like falling for it. So like, sounds like y'all are comfortable with the way things are. Or maybe you genuinely believe what your people told you growing up, that these are your oppressors, that they want the worst for you, that they're in competition with you. And because of that, you have raised racist bigoted, homophobic, xenophobic children who now grow up to be adults who all hate each other. I don't know. Kind of sounds like it though. Frogan and like Ethan fighting, Ethan fighting with Hassan. This is the thing that remains so true in my mind, that bubbles and conflict will remain and all of humans live in just cycles of who's allowed to justify hating who, and then we'll continue going back and forth. That's why I say, and this is why I try to stress, even to my enemies, may I treat you with kindness while still holding you accountable. While still holding you accountable. Because again, like, you are what you put into the world. The world is a reflection of itself. So Ethan needs to get off the fucking internet, just like Jordan Peterson. You know the irony of Ethan Klein hating Jordan Peterson? He said, he's just like me. I told Ethan, I told him these progressives, they'll come for you, Ethan Nakes. They'll come for you like they came for me all over my face. Tammy was not pleased. Tammy was disgusted. Ethan, Frogan's out to get you, Ethan. And now Ethan is on the internet, Jordan Peterson posting. What a beautiful cycle. What a beautiful cycle. I will never forget when I first saw Jordan Peterson take a rip of that vape on H3H3 and I thought he's a cool dude. And now him and Ethan can be paranoid together on Twitter. Beautiful. <sighs> be <laughs> we'll see who cancels who, <laughs> Bryson. <laughs> oh, a classic. I really wish the best for Ethan. But didn't I tell, God, didn't I, wasn't it yesterday I was telling you if he doesn't stop his shit, he'll be the next lol cow. He'll be the next boogie. He just keeps giving it. Lol cow status, here we come. Here we come. Yeah. And it sucks because Ethan also is hungry for the views. He's always craving the views. He's picking fights with Sneeko. He's picking fights with everybody. Yeah, it is sort of interesting. Damn. Aaliyah says Ethan is in his victim era. Not very mindful, not very cutesy, not very demure. Yeah, maybe it is that. Maybe Ethan's just like, I am the victim. But to be fair, and I know this sounds crazy. You know, people are so easily comforted if you just say you also hate the people they hate. They just want to know that like everyone sucks. 
Everyone sucks. Ethan sucks. Frogan sucks. Hassan sucks. All of you suck. But also, humans are going to human. Humans suck. They're also really great. Ethan is a really great person. Hassan's a really great person. Sneeko is a really great person. <laughs> they also suck. They also suck so bad. Okay? So this morning, while I was having my coffee, and I thought to myself, before I saw this tweet, why can't I explain to people, like, why can't I almost like, what could I do to get, the, I was thinking about a particular person, but I was like, why can't I get this person to understand? Like, what tool could I give them? But I, you know, you have to radically accept that you can't force anyone to see anything. They have to be willing. They have to be willing. That's why this idea that Ethan, Hassan, you know who, they're all obsessed with thinking they're standing on some moral high ground when they're literally screaming down below up at us. And I do not want to be in that hell with them. So in order to not be with them, you can't be fighting on Twitter. You can't be engaging with them in that way. You need to really let it go. Don't back down. Don't stop standing up for yourself. But as long as Ethan acts a fool on Twitter, as long as Ethan keeps going off, as long as Ethan throws tan tantrums like Boogie, you are what you become. Like you are what you are. And it's just going to be a moment in time. The dilemma is that this moment in time can last a lifetime. And this is somebody who still watches H3. I don't watch them all the time. I don't, I, I like them, but sometimes I get burnt out. You know, I watch Hassan, but not all the time. I get burnt out. Some people are just so in a bubble that I enjoy jumping into the bubble and hearing their opinions, but then I get burnt out and I leave the bubble again. But it is a bubble and everybody lives in a bubble, every single one of us. A bubble is your perception and your perception is limited. That's why it is so hard for me not to want to like, you know, when I see someone going very hard on one end, I just want to be like, okay, I'm going to play contrarian to you because you're annoying me. And then I hop into that bubble and I'm like, okay, I'm going to do it to you too. Because not that I'm fighting for what I believe in, but you're annoying me that you think you actually have the literal truth. That's crazy. Like that's crazy, but I love that. Let's fight about it. You know, I feel the same about Kidology. Chat says, yeah, I can see that perspective. I love Kidology. I love Z, but she's also got an interesting bubble and it can be hard. It can be, yeah, it can feel like, okay, I'm not sure if this is like my home 24 seven, but I love it. <clears throat> What's your favorite bubble aside from your own? Great question. Right now I'm in the girly bubble. I'm in the pretty like girl boss feministy bubble, but not like political feminist, more like spiritual feminist. Like something I like about Drew, uh, a follow. Afawalo, Afawalo, I'm learning how to say her name. The thing I like about Drew is that she isn't just coming from like a patriarchal feminist reaction uh, bubble. Like a lot of feminism, uh, I don't, it's kind of just like white feminism. It tends to be only in reaction to men. And Drew makes it clear that she's not centering men in the conversation, even though she's using them to prove a point, which I think is really important. And even though she's in a particular bubble than I am, I really enjoy that kind of a bubble. Like, I don't want to be in a bubble where the women centralize the men as the point. Like, I was listening to, you know, Sprinkle Sprinkle. And, you know, she was, uh, she was with a married man. You know, she was his mistress. Then she cheated on him to be with her now husband, who was married at the time. And she was recommending books and she recommends books and reads books that are like, men are always this way. They'll never change. And I'm like, Oh, she reads books that like basically dilute all men down to all men suck. And I don't believe that. So these women who sent like center their life around having a bag, getting a man who provides for them, all of that, that is a bubble that is saying they don't centralize men, but they are right. So the reason I like Drew's bubble is it seems like in her bubble, they don't do that. So I like bubbles that are about uplifting yourself, regardless of your minority status and playing a game that works for you while acknowledging it, but isn't about appealing to the oppressor. It's not about hating the oppressor. It's about empathizing and being compassionate, but not giving the spoons to them. I think that's what I like about it. So when you ask me like, what's my other favorite bubble, any bubble that allows me when talking about people, obviously before that bubble, the nature bubble is my favorite. Let's be real. Like nothing beats nature bubble. 
So if I could pick one bubble to live in for the rest of my life, it would be like nature bubble, very far from people bubble. But also I love the internet. So it's all about that picking and choosing. <sighs> yeah, I like a bubble that lets me breathe. So nature bubble, always the best, always the best bubble. But if you're talking about people bubbles, I like that bubble right now. Philosophy bubbles, but not philosophy debate bro bubbles. Philosophy, Eastern medicine, Eastern philosophy, Eastern kind of bubbles I like, you know? Who centralized men without realizing it? Who centralizes men without realizing it? So many people. You know? Is this a new take for you, Brittany? I feel like I remember you mentioning that you didn't vibe with Drew not long ago. I hesitated on Drew because she felt a little too misandrist, but I've warmed up to her as of late and I'm reading her book, which helps. And I've been consuming a lot more of her content. So I've definitely like warmed up to her. I think the misandry that I was seeing was probably just contextual and wasn't true. Um, now that I'm learning about her parents and how their life is, I'm realizing like, okay, it was just a, it was just a coincidental thing. I don't think the misandry is that that bad. I think we all fight misandry. I mean, I'm always fighting it all the time because men give me plenty of reasons to be a misandrist. You feel me? But I think she's pretty good at honing it in, you know. Question, when it comes to creating my own bubble, do I just go about being a bubble of one? Yeah, I mean, you are a bubble of one when you have a relationship with yourself. When you have a full relationship with yourself, it's just you. Who else is in there with you, right? It's we let the world into us and so we let them into our bubble. You can choose other people. You have a relationship outside of yourself. You can contextualize your whole existence on the basis of like what other people are doing and that's you like being in their bubble. But like when you're home alone, when you're going to sleep, when you're with yourself in the shower, like it's just you. So then what do you do to create your own vibe like when we come home I love coming home to my house when we come back into the house it's like oh god it's like I oh my god I undress I feel so good like this is my home and I built it brick by brick you know so I think like when we have these conversations about building our own bubbles we're really asking ourselves about creating a space that's just for us and that space exists in your head like obviously there's a physical space but then there is that internal space like it's your perception through your own brain and so you have to kind of have a balance with it. But it, it takes work. Now, I say my partner is the only person I ever want to build a bubble with. So we took his bubble and my bubble and we morph and, morphed it into a bubble. But when he's alone from me, he's like in his own little bubble. And when I'm alone from him, I'm in my own little bubble. And then like we meet up again and it's like we create this bubble. So there's this physical space of this home we've built together. And then there's like our individual bubbles when we only have that perception with ourselves, right? Yes, Mars, get home, rip off the mask and chill. Exactly. Yeah. Um, having homophobic parents, how did you deal with the fact that you might fall in love with a woman? I'm bi but terrified that I'll end up with a girl. Sorry for trauma dumping. Not really trauma dumping. Good question. I think ultimately that's a journey we've all gone through. I mean, as bi people, we or I'm a pansexual person, but like we can choose, but we can't choose. You know, you can always choose to settle for somebody regardless of gender. Or you can let the universe send your partner to you because they're going to be that high compatibility partner. Like I've been in settling relationships before, men, women, non-binary people. Wasn't the right fit. Obviously we broke up. My high compatibility partner, they don't even care about gender. From the outside, are we perceived as a heterosexual couple? Yes. And I don't give a fuck. Because the bubbles perceiving us only matters in terms of survival and getting along with our community <clears throat> and has nothing to do with our life, right? And so for our friends and our family, like my parents are immigrants, you know, they're from the Middle East. They talked a big game about disowning their gay kids. They didn't do it. They have like three out gay kids. They didn't do it, but they get really aggressive if you want to bring home a same sex partner. <clears throat> so at the end of the day, I would have chosen my partner over my family. And I make that clear even now. If either my partner makes me pick between them or my parents, or if my parents make me pick, I will assume they have gone crazy because that's an insane thing to ask someone to do. So if I ended up with a woman, like one time I remember my mom said, are you coming home for Thanksgiving? And I said, no, I'm spending it with a, I'm a person I'm dating. And she goes, who are you dating? And I said, it's a girl. And she goes, ugh, I don't want to hear about that. 
Okay. That's why I didn't tell you, bitch. But she asked, so I don't lie. So I would have picked my partner. Had I married that person, I would have told my mom, I love you. I'm not coming home unless she can come too. And I'm not coming home unless you treat her well. And that maybe would have been the end of my parents and I having a sort of relationship where I came home for the holidays. And that would have been great. I choose myself over anybody else. And I think what I'm really choosing is my values. So if my partner, for some reason, had a horrible value take or became a horrible person somehow, I would pick my values over my partner. I would get them the help they needed. But what if they didn't need help? What if they just literally were like, I am now homophobic? I'd be like, the fuck? You have to, I pick myself. I pick my values. You know, values over loyalty, as I say. <clears throat> Let's see. Hassan seems like he just wants to be good friends with Ethan, but Ethan keeps insulting his other friends. It's weird that Ethan keeps putting him in an ultimatum type situation. It always comes to that. It does. People on the internet are very sensitive. We're all sensitive. We're all neurodivergent, sensitive babies, and nobody wants to say it out loud because everyone's pretending they're very tough debate bros, but we're all pussies, and that's why none of us can figure it out, and everyone's fucked up, and they don't want to talk about it, and... I wish in an ideal world, we'd all just be friends and get along. But just like world governments, it doesn't seem to be the case. Like that's the irony is like we are reflections of why the world doesn't get along. You're mad about Israel and Palestine, then figure out how to be friends. And then we can talk about solving the Middle East. That is my strongest belief. I will talk about world peace when I can solve the peace in my own family, which I can't figure out how to do, bitch. Ethan and Hassan not being able to be friends is exactly Israel and Palestine. And no one wants to accept it. Our life is a reflection of what we put into it. Where the state of the world is, is a reflection of us as a whole. And this is reality. All right? Your bubbles keep clashing. You won't get along. You both need to be right. And this is why I make my own bubble. And I say, you know, you have fun, girls. You have fun. I'm going to go hang out over here with my wife. And watch Luffy, okay? You have fun, though. See how Hassan and I both like Luffy? That should be enough. We should be best friends. But not really. I'm just saying. Okay? It is what it is, girl. It is what it is. Humans are going to human. Acting like you're above where you are in your biological evolution is just silly. I can't even get motherfuckers to stop cheating. I can't get motherfuckers to stop diddling kids. And you're out here talking about world peace? Please sit down. Be serious. Be serious right now. Where are you right now typing these things anyways? Probably in your mom's basement. Looking at CP, you freaks. Anyways, okay. Let's see. Thank you, Brittany. Love your thoughts on that. I want to be seen, but I don't know by whom. I wonder if starting a YouTube is a good way to pro uh, project my bubble of one into a space outside of myself. No, no, no. Pause. Okay. The bubble you create for yourself is not for other people. The bubble you create with other people is a bubble you both make together by seeing one another. So when my friends and I talk, we're creating like right now we're in a bubble. Right now you are watching me and I am talking to you and we have formed a bubble. Right now someone's being raped and it's not one of us. Right now someone is being robbed and it's not one of us. Right now somebody is sleeping and it's not one of us. Okay. They are in their own bubbles experiencing a life so separate from this. We are now having a bubble experience because we're having a perception of what is existence and existing, right? So like we are doing this. This is not my bubble. I did create this bubble on the internet, but it's not mine because I share it with you. I share this bubble with you. I Like I don't exist here alone. Like this isn't just about me. Like I am perceiving you. You are perceiving me. So like we are in a bubble together right now. And then once you click off my live stream, imagine it like, Hopping to a different bubble. Oh, I'm not going to watch Britney. I'm going to watch, I'm going to go watch H3H3. Bubble hop. I'm bubbling hop from Britney's bubble to Ethan's bubble. And it's probably going to be different energy with different voices and different people, right? So that bubble of one, the one you create for your peace of mind, the one you come home to, the one you go to should be sacred and should just be for you and maybe your life partner, maybe your cat. My cat's in my bubble, you know. But when I'm with my sister, she's not in my bubble and I'm not even in hers. We create a bubble when we're together. We like form an environment and we're like, cool. We're like bringing this bubble to life. And this is the context in which we are having this bubble. Thank you, drink water. 
<clears throat> okay. <clears throat> and the, remember with YouTube, the illusion is that we're all intimate. Like the illusion is that we're close. Remember that the internet is a very dangerous space because it convinces you that there's like an intimacy happening that's only so real, which is why Hassan and Ethan are arguing and Frogan is getting involved and this is happening and this is happening because there's like a level of intimacy. Look at this tweet. Look at this tweet from Frogan. <clears throat> Hello. Okay, this one where she says, this motherfucker never shuts up. Oh my God. Okay, who is she talking to? So obviously she's in her bubble on Twitter, but this bubble can be seen by other people. So Ethan sees it and then Ethan reacts, right? So Ethan sees it, Ethan reacts. And Ethan says, she has always inserted herself in my conversations. So Frogan has a bubble in which she's reacting to Comrade Casey, whoever the fuck that is. And her bubble sees this, who by the way, like 7,000 likes on this post. That's more interaction than she ever fucking gets because it involves Ethan, who is the star. And then Ethan engages more. And then people go, he's crashing out. He's fucking, he's flailing. He's just a person. Samantha, welcome to memberships. Let's go. Just posted a new video for Love is Blind. Now I just have to watch the reunion and I'm all caught up. Ethan is way too rich to be stun locked by Twitter drama. This is why introspection and forming your own bubble is so important. Why isn't Ethan happy to go home to his bubble? Where is his sense of peace? Now, what I think the person who talked about forming their own bubble really wants is to be seen. And we should all be seen for parts of us that make sense. One of the things that is like that's hard with friendships, and this is where this gets really complicated, is we want to believe our friends love every part of us. But that's just not true. Our friends love the parts of us that they love and maybe don't love every part of us. And that's okay. You don't have to love every part of your friend. You can still have boundaries. You can still have good conversations. You can still have limits. But there is this illusion that my friend will love every part of me. Now, I remember one time I was sleeping with one of my friends as one does, okay? My friends and I have, in the past, I've, I've had friends that I've been lovers with. And I remember I was in their house and my, um, my friend comes up to me and they said, Brittany, do you show every part of yourself to us? And I was like, oh, no. And they were like, why not? We love you. And I was like, yeah. I feel like I show the parts of you that I think you'll understand. And the rest are for somebody else, like the person that will understand them. And at first, it kind of hurt their feelings a little bit, barely. And they were like, oh, I guess I thought maybe you wouldn't see every like part of me and I would see every part of you. And I was like, I just think there are things that are sacred that even if I tried to show them to you, if you can't see them, they're just going to get you more confused and you're going to feel uncomfortable, right? Like I can't show my homosexuality to my parents. They don't get it. You have to understand, it doesn't matter how many times my siblings and I have tried. I cannot give this tool to my parents to understand homosexuality. They just like, they don't. They have a wall so thick even Israel's rockets couldn't bomb it, okay? The, their, like, wall around this subject matter is so thick. Even if their child was murdered in a hate crime, they would, they would pray for them in church, and they wouldn't even think about changing their mind about homophobia, okay? They're still really good people, but they're also battling their own generational curses. They're also dealing with their own traumas. Everybody is. They're trying their best. They're compassionate. They, they do try to reach where they can. The parts of us that we see in each other, we love, and there's so much beauty there. But what I do is I try my hardest to, after 30 years of trying, to not have those conversations that I know won't go anywhere. The issue with Ethan and all these other people is they keep trying to have conversations that won't go anywhere. One of the things I try to do is just stop the conversation if I think it's not going anywhere. But then what people hear is, you're not trying hard enough. Habibi, I've been trying so hard. I'm on the brink of tears. I can't do it anymore. But what they see is me giving up because they, they won't get it. You know, again, I share a lot of myself on the internet, but I know when people get it because if they get it, they get it. If they don't, they don't. And I can tell by the way they talk back to me. You know, somebody asked me like, oh, you show so much of yourself on the internet. Aren't you afraid somebody's only going to date you and like use all that information to like manipulate you? No, because my partner 
and all of the people I've dated and all the people I've known is the only person that I have felt truly understands me and like knows how to regurgitate my own ideas back to me and even expand on them. Not that other people can't do that in part. I have friends and family that can in part discuss the levels with me, discuss my bubbles. You guys do it here all the time. You're always like expanding on ideas with me, but that's just one part of who I am. He does it in all the intimate ways that other people can't. So my friend who at the time I was intimate with was like, but we're so intimate. We were and we are. But even that has its limits. We all have our limits with the intimacy. So Ethan and Hassan and all these people keep fighting and fighting and fighting. They're like, why can't you get it? Why can't you get it? Why can't you get it? In the same way, no one else can get anything. We only understand what we understand. It's hard to understand anything different. It's really hard to understand things you don't understand. But since people think they're smart and they're millionaires and they're reasonable and they're successful and they feel like, but I understand this and this is complex, so I should be able to. It doesn't work that way. You can't understand it just because you want it. You actually have to have the right. You ever have those eureka moments where you're like, oh my God, I just got what that person was saying. It's been six months. You can't just have a eureka moment on the spot unless you have the tools already. And usually what happens during those Eureka moments is you've gathered tools along that way and the right tool came into the right place and boom, it all made sense and your brain put it together. Jesse, thank you, or Jessica, Jessica, welcome to memberships. It's why I don't like debates as much as they're fun to watch and I definitely watch like WIC panels and stuff. I... Don't see them very, they don't go somewhere necessarily unless somebody has like an epiphany. They're on in the debate, right? Like it's, they only have so much of the understanding and then they write you off. You know, people write each other off. Like that's crazy. That's crazy. That's crazy. But that's because we're not, we're talking about lived experiences that are different. We're having different lived experiences. Our brains are functioning differently. Like even the concept of autism or neurodivergence compared to like neurotypicals, like even that idea is really not about something being right or wrong. It's about something being completely so different that the perception changes. When I'm hanging out with my like autist bubble people, the experience is so different than when I'm hanging out with my neurotypicals, right? Like I'm having a a completely different lived experience. And if I hang out in one bubble too long, I start talking like them. I, you know, I'll even do their mannerisms. I mean, heck, sometimes I hang out with someone for an hour and all of a sudden I'm like talking like them and you know what I mean? Because I, I have that thing. Like I, I like, oh, I'm like, look at that person. And this is how they talk. Now, when I'm home alone and I'm, I'm shed from like all those people I've been around, I revert to like Brittany. And Brittany is still partially the movie quoting, mimicking person you see, but there is a Brittany. And she's usually the most herself when she's alone. And so the only person I feel that alone with in the best way possible is my partner. So sometimes people feel like, but I really want to get to know you. How much do you think Ethan and Hassan know each other? How much do you think they could even know each other in the way that would be necessary for this not to happen? You know that YouTuber who fights with everybody, Hassan, me, and he burns the bridges with everybody? He said something about me in context to Hassan a while back where he was like, I don't get it. I've never said anything mean about Brittany. I've never said anything about her. I've never gone after her personally. Like in real life, I've only been good to her. And he goes, even me and Hassan, we never had problems in our friendship. It was over work stuff. Mm -hmm. Do you hear yourselves? Brittany never did anything. I never did anything to Brittany. I never did anything to Hassan. We only burned bridges over work stuff. Okay. That's not friendship. Real friends... Don't burn bridges over work stuff. That's what I'm trying to explain to you. That's why you're only coworkers, coworkers and relationships because of work stuff. Why would I end my friendship over work stuff? What does work have to do with my friendship? Work is work, friends are friends. And then we can talk about it in different ways. I've had friends that are like, hey, I'll do that collab with you, but like, I don't want to be associated with so-and-so. I'm like, okay, for sure. I've had friends say, hey, actually, like, I know we were going to do this collab, but I actually like, I, because of the timing, I just feel like it will be weird. Okay. Just talk to me. But the problem is, is like, this is the, the mush brain of the internet. So Ethan and, and Hassan go, we're friends. And Ethan has the audacity to say, hold on, can you guys see it? What is this? 
first of all, is Frogan a representative of Hassan's community? I'm just so confused by that. I also blame Hassan for continually hand-waving her horrific behavior to the point where it's essentially an endorsement. She's working. She's at her job. Like, that's the problem. She's at her job. She's allowed at her job to do her own thing online and say it on a podcast, have an opinion. She doesn't represent Hassan literally. If Ethan has a problem with Frogan, take it out on Frogan. If you have a problem with Hassan, talk to Hassan. But this is not friendship. Like, this is work. Hassan and Ethan are working if they do anything on Twitter. That's why when the bridge was burned, I said, talk to me in private because ultimately you're just going to end up using this for views because in private, I had been told a lot of things are used for views. So I was like, if you really want a friendship, talk to me in private. And what does she do instead? Burn the bridge, blocked, talk shit forever and can't handle it because it was never about friendship. It was always about work. But how much better is that for the audience to be like, my best friend, she was so mean to me. This girl I didn't know, I don't know anything about. This girl who never even said she was really my friend outside of work. How much better was that for views? This is the same shit. And it's funny that they're all connected. All of us are connected in this cesspool on the internet. This is why I don't spend time on Twitter. Because it's a cesspool. Discourse said I have a, I'm, I keep having an internet issues. Can someone give me a short summary of what happened? What's happening with Ethan and Hassan for you guys just coming in? What would you say the summary of the situation is? What, how would you explain the situation? Ethan mad at Frogan for Frogan having an opinion that's none of Ethan's business unless he makes it his business. Ethan being a bitch calls out Hassan for Frogan having an opinion as if she's Hassan Jr., is this work or friendship? What is happening? Is Frogan not her own woman? Can she not speak for her fucking self? Why would you bring Hassan into it? What does Hassan have to do with anything? At the end of the day, what do you want Hassan to do? Okay, Frogan, daddy says no more. Like, is Hassan supposed to literally go in there and tell Frogan, like, you need to, like, censor your Twitter? That's crazy. Wait. Kay says Frogan is in Hassan's employee. She has her own podcast and Twitch stream. Does he pay his mods? Because like mods on YouTube are different than like mods who are doing maybe editing stuff or something. I don't know if Frogan is an employee. I don't, I don't know. I don't even, what is she a mod for? Twitch? Is she a mod for Twitch? She's no longer a mod. Okay, then what the fuck is Ethan talking about? Is Ethan just brain dead? No, don't answer that. We know the answer. So, okay, is that what it is? Hmm. That's crazy. I think Ethan is a bit Islamic phobic, chat says. I think Ethan, I think bubbles are traumatized by other bubbles and they're all in a bigger bubble together. But there's no way if you're pro-Israel, you don't think Muslims suck. And if you're anti-Israel, you don't think Jews suck. I'm sorry. There's no fucking way that some part of your brain isn't 100% being xenophobic, racist, like you're literally blaming a people. You keep saying it's like the governments. And I believe some of you, I do believe some Israelis that are anti-Hamas are anti-Hamas and not Palestinians. And I do believe some pro-Palestine people aren't just anti-Israel for being Jewish. I do believe that. But I think it's hard to make it clear the distinction when we're living in bubbles that are purposely trying to twist everyone's words. But prejudice is real. Prejudice is real. Lots of people in the West are afraid or people around the world are afraid of Arab communities. That is just a reality. And so if you are brown enough, Arab enough, if you are Muslim, if you are wearing hijab, if you are standing out of the crowd, people might absolutely because of that prejudice act differently towards you. That is just a thing that is, and it's going to become more apparent. And I actually do think, and I've said this like many times, not that it matters, but like, I think Muslims will get their their reign in a way. Like the religion's growing. People are loving it. Modern people are joining it every day. There are a lot of people who are leaving it. But, you know, I think there's a chance that Islam might become prominent. And I know people are afraid of that. But everyone's afraid of somebody. This idea that like, oh, but you don't need to be afraid of us. You need to be afraid of them. We all need to be concerned of people who think they know better for us to the point where they're limiting our civil rights. 
I think that's what we need to be concerned about. I don't really care if somebody's a Muslim or a Christian or whatever. Until you all start saying that the government has the right to legislate your bodies, your gay marriages, how you raise your kids. So at the end of the day, like prejudice and bigotry is so part of the human condition. I don't think anyone's exempt from it. I don't think anyone exists on the planet who doesn't have prejudice and bigotry. So we have to have that conversation. That's why you have to ask yourself. That's why you have to be introspective. Who are the people that when put in a war, like a room with them, my fear spikes? Why when I'm around a certain person, does my fear go, oh God? And what is it based off of? Sex, gender, skin color, religion? Who's the person? Who's the other human being that when you're in a certain situation, your brain goes, uh-oh, wait. And where, who do you prejudge? Where is the prejudgment coming from? And you can justify it and say, I have a reason to feel scared of men. I was raped by a man. Sure. And then you can extend that to every other circumstance. Of course, I'm afraid of a black person. They robbed me once. Of course, I'm afraid of a Muslim person. They bombed me once. Of course, I'm afraid of a woman. She peed on me once. No, wait, that's a good thing. Hold on. Of course, I'm afraid of a woman. She took my kids from me in custody court. This is why we go to therapy. We go to therapy so we can make sure that our trauma isn't causing us to hurt other people when we don't mean to. Perfectly decent people justify bigotry every day because they were wounded. Okay? Go to therapy, be introspective, pop that bubble. Okay, pop the bubble. Not the water sports bubble. That's You should try that. But, you know, pop the bubble. Okay. Any other thoughts on Ethan and Hassan and Frogan? You know? I don't know. I don't think there's much more to say. I think we covered everything. If you guys have any thoughts, we can go over it. I wasn't expecting sports talk. <laughs> Ethan, uh, Ethan and Frogan are both incapable of civil discourse. Oh, 1,000. That's why I said, that's why I said the other day when, he, when, when people were like, Brittany wants to be on Ethan's show so bad. Ethan is bad for collaborations. I don't know how to tell you this. Ethan would be horrible for collaborations. Yeah, he'll give you views and yes, there will be money temporarily. But once he's decided you're a bad person, he's literally calling out Hassan in this tweet. Like Ethan is only friends with you for as long as you make him feel comfortable. And that let's be real, is most people, which is why, and I will say it again, I can be an amazing friend to people because I don't need you to agree with me. But if you make me have to agree with you to get along, it's not going to work. I tell you right now, I'm a great friend. I really don't need you to agree with me, but we also don't have to talk about everything. So this goes back to that idea I was pondering this morning. Like I was thinking of a friend of mine where I was like, the politics, is the politics that got in the way or was it trauma that got in the way, really? And when you think about it, it's like, why did that happen? And you think about it and like the conversation was surrounding politics, which makes no sense. And the conversation was surrounding this, which makes no sense. Because like, why do we have to talk about those things? But some people feel like if I can't talk about politics with you, I can't trust you. I don't feel that way. Because I know why we all come to political conclusions all differently. Our life was different. I don't need my friends to vote the same as me. But if we're, but we also don't need to talk about it because if we talk about it, I'm not backing down and you're not going to convince me to be anti-gay. You're not going to convince me to be pro-Russia. You're not going to convince me to be on your side just because we're friends. I don't want to be friends who I'm always trying to convince them to change, to be more like me. That's not what friendship is. I like you the way you are. If I need you to be someone different, maybe we shouldn't be friends. That doesn't mean I'm not open with boundaries like the merch says. I am open with boundaries. So if there's a friendship like Ethan and, and Hassan's that gets a little contentious because of politics, we can negotiate. Maybe we don't talk about politics. Maybe we see all the other good reasons I like this person. But also because content creators are so busy, none of them are hanging out enough on time. Ethan says it all the time. He never has time for friends. So when was him and Hassan spending any time of time together when Hassan literally streams every day? All these people who think they're friends, you're friendly and you're casual friends. But none of you all are inner circle or ride or die because that takes so much more effort to build. Trust me when I say this, one day Ethan's team will leave. Maybe Dan will stay. 
But one day these people will eventually grow old and do something else with their lives because that's just how life goes, as it should, as it should. Just like you guys one day will do something different with your lives. Maybe I won't be the content creator you watch. Maybe you'll watch somebody else. The bubble will shift. Maybe you all get rid of the internet. We're all on a different journey. And who knows where it will go? Let's see, would you say this is similar to blaming H3 for his subreddit, which he consistently has to distance himself from? Mm, I'm not sure. You know, that's a great question, but I'm not sure. You know, Reddit's communities, fans, viewers, I think your community is a is a reflection of you. And I think Ethan's toxic community is a reflection of his toxicity. If I'm going to be real, there's always going to be a part of your community that's weird or even fake fans or whatever. But I think Ethan shows way too much uh, desire to create enemies that he encourages an audience to be created of those kinds of people. But also remember, like, and I hate to say it this way, but Hassan, Ethan, all of them have like parts of their audience that like have fan Twitters. Like imagine having an audience that has like a fan Twitter of you. One of my callers said that to me once. They were like, you're not the type of YouTuber to have like a fan account. And I'm like, oh God, that would be so weird if one of you made, and I swear to God, if one of you make it now, I'm gonna think you're a troll, making like a fan Twitter of Britney Simon. Like, why would you do that? Like, the parasociality that would have to occur for somebody to make a fan account of somebody who's over the age of 18. And a lot of these accounts are 19, 20, 21. The people who do it for Dream, the people that do it for George. Yeah, I think you're, you all need to go to therapy. Like, you're acting like they're banned people. Like, and even if you do, like, you should grow out of that. Like, I stopped keeping celebrities, like, posters in my walls after 18, right? Or whatever it was, 17. Like... Eventually, you're supposed to grow out of fandom behavior. And so I'm watching you. And I just think that's how humans are. Every human is going to have a different story. I definitely don't want to be that person. But hey, remember that Taylor Swift and K-pop bands and all these people are as famous and wealthy as they are because people are that parasocial. I guess somebody's got to be that parasocial. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? All right. With that said, good luck to Ethan and Frogan and Hassan. Ethan needs to go to intense therapy. Or he needs to talk to somebody to deconstruct his bubble. He needs to deconstruct it. All right? All right. I'll be right back. In my head, in real life while I'm dead, my belly's being fed and I'm okay. I'm just fine, yet all I do is whine, not to you in my mind, cause I know I don't make sense. I've been nothing but blessed, so why's my life a mess? Please tell me, cause I'm sick of thinking, yeah. Sick of reaching out for the truth and living life as a fool. Dun, 